today, coming to you today from the world's tiniest apartment in uh, in the beautiful uh, city of Milan, Milano, Milano, Italy. Uh, I'm in the attic garret. It's a tiny, tiny apartment. Over here is the uh, wall for a well-equipped but small bathroom. Behind me is a bed. Over there, that's the door. And uh, six flights of stairs, and I'm down in the courtyard and out of the building. So it's, uh, you know, it's a, um, a different kind of living. <laughs> it's a lot of steps. But there is an elevator, and uh, maybe I'll take the elevator. I took the elevator up with my bags yesterday, and I'll probably take them down with my bags tomorrow when I leave. Um, but, um, but anyhow, uh, it's not a bad place to be. And, you know, I'm only here for a couple of days, so a small space is not bad. Um, the um, my big adventures today are that I have to take a uh, tampone, a COVID test, to be able to return to the United States uh, tomorrow if I'm lucky. If I my test is negative, I'll be able to come back. If not, it'll be a different kind of adventure <laughs> for a while, <laughs> being in a quarantine facility. So hopefully uh, that's not the case. Um, well, let's see. Today's um, today's love letter. Today's episode is about power. And I'm not talking about psychic power. I'm not talking about power couples. I'm not talking about uh, political power, although political power in Italy is a fascinating subject in its own right. Uh, there are m multiple political parties here in Italy. This is not a two-party system. This is a 12-party system, at least, and uh, parliamentary democracy. And it's an interesting system, and the uh, politics here are fascinating. I've had some amazing political discussions with people uh, while I've been here, and uh, maybe we'll talk about that in a future, uh, a future podcast, future vlog. Um, but uh, today's uh, episode is about electrical power, and uh, electrical power is something I get questions about from time to time from people who wonder, you know, they're coming to Italy or coming to Europe in general, and they want to know about, uh, you know, what do they do about keeping their cell phone charged, or what do they do about... Uh, about uh, keeping their laptop charged if they're bringing a laptop with them, or they, maybe they have a rechargeable camera, or they have a, you know, a electronic watch or something like that, or something like that. You know, what do they do? How do they keep those things charged without them burning up? Uh, and uh, what do they do? And so, to start with, uh, electricity in Italy, in Europe in general, is different than electricity in the United States. In the United States, we're used to having a, a plug that looks a little bit like this. A uh, little, this is a little two-blade, uh, 15 amp uh, power adapter for USB, and, um, and we have an outlet in the wall, and that outlet delivers 110 volts uh, AC at 60 cycles, and uh, it's usually 15 or 20 amps, uh, depending on the, depending on the kind of outlet it is. Now in Europe uh, and in Italy, the power standard is. 230 volts AC, so twice the voltage, and uh, 60 cycles per second instead of, uh, I'm sorry, 50 cycles per second instead of 60 cycles per second. So it's a, it's a different, uh, different power standard entirely, and uh, you have to be careful. Now most modern electronics, let, we'll take this little uh, charger for example, uh, and I, it's, I can see if I can read this here in this dim light. Uh, this says that it's good for 110 to 240 volts AC input. So that means that I could plug this into the wall and, um, and get uh, power, except that in Italy the, the outlets, the plugs look like this. So you need an adapter like this. And uh, you plug the adapter in, and now I have a European, uh, well, at least for an Italian, uh, power USB power adapter with no no fuss muss or bother. You can get these things, um, you know, online. Uh, they oftentimes come in a kit with a whole bunch of different ones. I usually just look at thrift stores. You can almost always find at a thrift store a, a box of power adapters like this, and uh, you know, there's not much that can go wrong with them. Just and uh, you know, I get some of those, and I ha I have probably a dozen, you know, in my in my travel drawer. Um, and uh, I don't use them very much because what I do when I travel is that I um, I use a device that's made for the uh, made for the country I'm in. So this is a uh, a USB adapter for Italy. I like getting bright colors because they're harder for me to lose. I lose crap all the time, and uh, this one comes from a. Uh, 
a Scandinavian store that's um, actually in a lot, I think it's a Danish store, it's in a lot of, uh, of different um, Italian cities and big cities. I've seen them, I think there's three in Bologna, there's a bunch in Florence. I, I've seen two so far in Milan since I've been here. Uh, this store is called Flying Tiger Copenhagen and it's kind of like a miniature IKEA without the furniture so it has you know lots of different accessories and uh, USB adapters are tricky things some of the cheap ones are not good uh, they have poor filtering they have you know uh, maybe uh, they have leakage where AC kind of might come to the uh, shell of the of the USB cord and stuff like that so it's important to get a good one uh, I tend to uh, to listen to the uh, the video reviews that uh, a guy from the Isle of Man in the UK does. His name is Big Clive. <laughs> Big Clive, uh, he's reviewed a lot of different USB adapters and he's given the okie dokie to the, the ones from Flying Tiger. This is about four euros so it's not a not a very expensive one and uh, that's what I use so I use, uh, I use that. Uh, now uh, something that's really good to have uh, when you're traveling in Europe is if you're in a hotel or a or in a um, in a uh, Airbnb or another short-term accommodation there's probably not going to be enough uh, AC outlets now this place is great because it's got plenty of AC outlets for a tiny little apartment but um, what I do is I carry around an adapter that uh, lets me plug multiple things into uh, into one uh, into one outlet and that makes it really easy for me uh, now where you get these from is, uh, and I like this one because it's got a switch on it. I don't really care about the switch, but the switch is illuminated when it's on so uh, that uh, provides a night light for me where I am. Um, the way you find these things, they're hard to find online before you leave, um, but um, I've, uh, I like to go to the, the uh, Euro stores. The Euro stores are like the dollar stores in the U.S. They're places where the stuff's cheap and it's imported. And in fact, if you're trying to find a Euro store and you ask, you know, Italian, uh, dove il negozio Euro, and they would say, well, and uh, because my accent is so bad and <laughs> my pronunciation is so bad, but also because they don't call them Euro stores, even though that's what it says on the door, they call them negozio Chinese because their products are all imported from China. And that's unusual for here because here in Italy, there's a lot of stuff that's manufactured right in Italy. They have a very robust manufacturing uh, uh, sector here. So, um, yeah, getting these things at the Euro at the Euro store, at the Negocio Chinese, is what to do. Uh, there's usually one in every neighborhood, and uh, you know these are cheap. Again, three or four or five euros for one. I this one maybe a little more because it has a switch on it. I don't remember. Uh, I had one that I was going to show you that didn't have the switch on it, but I can't find it. Hopefully it's packed away. I didn't leave it in the last uh, apartment I was living in in Bologna, but maybe I did. Who knows? Uh, but not a great loss if I didn't do that. Uh, one other strategy I, uh, I use is um, for devices that have this kind of plug on them. I call it the figure eight plug, um, if you're familiar with that. Uh, I go ahead and just, I get these cords that just have a, you know, it's a cord that has the right end on it. So, you know, I leave my U.S. cord at home and take this with me. So I have a, for example, a multiple USB uh, device that has, I think, six USB slots on it and one of these to plug it into the wall. And uh, and I, I, don't, I don't like using adapters. I mean, I just, I try not to use adapters with audio. I try not to use adapters with... Uh, you know, with, with power and so on. Uh, I'd rather use just the straight cord and makes it easier. Now, uh, there are a couple of uh, pitfalls that you need to watch out for. And uh, one of them is to make sure that, you know, your device is actually made for, uh, for any type of voltage you throw at it, whether it's 110 or 230. You need to look at the, at the power adapter itself and read the fine print and see what it says for input voltage. Uh, sometimes they'll also say in uh, they'll also say 50 slash 60 cycle, um, and um, then you know you're okay. Now I have had a problem with this in the past, and uh, some years ago I was staying with friends in the uh, city of Utrecht in the Netherlands, or no, Leiden in Leiden in the Netherlands, and um, I had with me a power strip. It was a surge protector, and I had a bunch of devices that I was I had plugged into this power strip, and then there was a I had the adapter and I plugged it into the wall. It was a US type power strip. And I plugged it into the, the wall in my, in my friend's apartment and turned it on and knocked out the 
power in three apartments <laughs> because, <laughs> because, you know, it was actually uh, um, had some circuitry in it because of the surge protection stuff. And, uh, and of course, uh, I didn't read and didn't read where it said that you could only uh, power it at, um, at um, you know, at 110 volts. So uh, very embarrassing, but uh, luckily it was just a circuit breaker and I, you know, dropped the, the uh, burned up uh, power supply in the, in the garbage before I left. Uh, the other uh, thing to worry about is if you're using a device that has a heating element in it. So this is like a hair dryer, um, a, um, I don't know, uh, a travel iron, a curling iron, something like that. Anything that has a, a heating element in it, uh, you have to be careful of those too, uh, because um, they are usually only made for one particular voltage standard. So for like 110 volts or 230 volts. And if you want to use one of those devices, you want to bring a hair dryer from home because you like your hair dryer, uh, you have to get a special transformer. And those are also available online. Um, I actually have one that came in a kit of adapters I got some years ago. I don't use it because I don't have enough hair to worry about drying. But also, um, I, um, you know, every time I've been in an apartment in uh, or in a hotel in Europe, there's always a hair dryer, so it's not a big deal. And there's usually an iron too, so uh, you know, it's not anything that uh, that should cause you problems. Uh, the last thing I want to say about power is that when I travel. And when I'm staying in a uh, when I'm staying in a uh, an accommodation, especially a, a short-term apartment, an Airbnb or a VRBO or something like that, uh, I always, always, always try to ask the proprietor, the owner, the host, um, where the circuit breaker panel is in the apartment, if there is one, um, and uh, because sometimes you know in these older buildings, and this is a really old building, you can see the the roof joists are actually hewn out rough hewn pieces of wood if you would see over there it's actually a round trunk of a tree that are holding the oh you can see one behind me that are holding the uh, the joist up um, it's an old building and uh, and so you know power in old buildings is a little funky sometimes and so uh, sometimes if you plug in the the uh, water boiler the you know the coffee boiler and you p turn on the uh, washing machine or um, turn on the oven or something uh, then uh, the breaker might pop. So it's really good to figure out where those are. I also also always ask where the water cutoff is. I had an apartment flood one time because of a pump that leaked, and uh, luckily I was able to find the uh, I was able to find the uh, the outlet to find the water cutoff before uh, before it did too much damage. And then uh, I often I'll, I'll, will always look for where the gas cutoff is too. Luckily I've never had a problem with that, but uh, always good to be prepared. Well, that's it from uh, Milano, a short uh, video about power. And I hope that wherever you are, you're having a wonderful time, that uh, life is good for you, and that uh, you have a smile on your face. And wish me luck for my COVID test today. I want to go home. <laughs> so from, uh, from Milano, from the, the sixth floor of a walk-up apartment, I uh, hope, uh, hope that your day is great. Ciao. See you later.